Hello, I'm Dr. Joan Serrada. I am currently the Infection Control Committee Chairman of the Corazon Loxin Montelibano Memorial Regional Hospital. I am also the Hospital Epidemiology Surveillance Unit Medical Officer and at the same time, a part of the ARID or the Emerging and Re-Emerging Infectious Disease Surveillance Unit of Corazon Loxin. Hello, I am John Mars Richmond Pabalinas, uh, the OIC Manager of the Infection Control Committee of Corazon Loxin Montelibano Memorial Regional Hospital. I serve as the manager of the subunits of the committee, namely the Infection Prevention Control Team and uh, the Hospital Epidemiology Surveillance Unit. The infection prevention and control team in each hospital or in the healthcare setting is a very vital unit. It has many roles actually because it's not only in the prevention of infection, making out policies, drafting all of these um, SOPs for the effective implementation of the prevention and control of infectious diseases within the hospital setting, not only among patients, but also among the healthcare workers as well for the safety of everyone. The hospital is actually one of the environments where infection, of course, would be seen most of the time in multitude. So different infections at the same time and with different modes of transmission as well. So it is important that there are policies and SOPs that would address this. And the prevent, infection prevention and control team would definitely have a very, very vital or pivotal role when it comes to this. It's also the unit that would be involved in the monitoring and surveillance of the implemented policies. So it's not only implementation and crafting, it's also making sure that everyone follows the policies for better outcomes among patients and for safety among healthcare workers within the healthcare institution. Since 2012, it was the time when um, our medical center chief actually ramped up the role of the IPCT in this hospital. We were among the hospitals where the IPCT team, the team actually was composed of six to eight members, and in some hospitals there are just one or two, regardless of the size of the hospitals and regardless of the number of patients that they cater to. So we were actually very very lucky that we had the full support of the medical center chief in regards to this. And it was even him, Dr. Julius M. Rilon, that challenged us to come up with uh, all the measures that there are, not only looking into the national guidelines, but also looking in the, into the international guidelines in the crafting of the policies and the SOPs or standard operating procedures of these preventive measures. With regards to this COVID-19 pandemic, even before we were struck by the pandemic, we were already conducting training activities with regards to donning and doffing, we already had unit members in charge of the ARID or the Emerging and Re-Emerging Infectious Disease Unit. We already had an established EID unit that can accommodate three patients with negative pressure. And we already had all the policies involved with the patient placement, management of these diseases or patients with these diseases. So when the pandemic struck, we already had the baseline, I would say. But of course, we were not really that ready for the magnitude of the pandemic. And eventually, there were so many patients 
that we had to involve other units as well, like the HEMB, and of course, everyone else in the Health Emergency Incident Command System, as well as everybody almost in the hospital. With the new normal, meaning the SARS-CoV-2 might be here with us, will stay here with us, and thus will become endemic anywhere in the world. Okay? So we have to have a new normal. But by now, I suppose everyone would understand that the minimum health prevent prevention requirements really need to be um, practice even just the hand hygiene and the procedural based utilization of the protective equipment personal protective equipment or what we call the PPEs we already have that in place and uh, what we need to do however is to really disseminate more train more of our people so that it it's not only confined. The knowledge, the practices, the capacity is not only confined to the infection control unit, but it will be also practiced among all members of the hospital staff. And that is our challenge. Various difficulties have been faced by the team at the course of this pandemic. At the start of 2020, uh, we were reduced to only three personnel manning the whole hospital. So we had to carry out various instructions and trainings to all hospital personnel. Aside from that, we were also tasked to orient various personnel on various routing schemes and also various um, disinfection and cleaning procedures to this unknown disease at that time. We do regular health teaching in the wards, regular compliance monitoring on all personnel. We also do regular hand hygiene programs for both patients and um, employees. We do training on proper handling of prevention, infection, uh, prevention and control of infection through um, orientation of bundles of care and as well as creation of policies in the hospital. Likewise, we are also advocates of antimicrobial stewardship to proper guidance to personnel on proper use of antibiotics. Seeing the various improvements our hospital has gone through the years and the change of um, the impressions and the practices of our hospital personnel, I think that makes me the proudest. Uh, I think everyone is owning up to their responsibility in the prevention and, in and control of infection. Maybe I'll start with the CLMMRH admin. Of course, this is headed by our medical center chief, Dr. Julius Andrilon. Sir, I would really very much like to thank you for all the support that you've given us and even for leading the way as far as infection prevention and control is concerned. Everything that the unit has established wouldn't really have been possible without your full support. We also have the support of the pharmacists when it comes to antimicrobial stewardship, which the IPCT is also a member or a part of. We also have the full support of our laboratory department. To them, I am very much thankful. We have the support of the medical as well as the nursing divisions. For that, thank you very much. For the community, it is of course very glaring that the prevention of infection does not only need to come from the healthcare personnel. From the community, there should already be practices of the minimum health prevention, infection prevention standards, okay? and hygiene. All of this does not really need a lot of money. We just need to be um, cognizant of the fact that our practices will help us survive any pandemic that may be hurled at us. 
we need all the help from you because you're the frontliners in actuality as far as infections transmission is concerned and to my team the infection prevention and control team i would like to very much offer you my appreciation because all these years you have worked very hard in terms of crafting all the policies and making sure that these policies are practiced by our healthcare personnel or the Corazon Loxin Montalibano Memorial Regional Hospital staff. To the community, I think we should follow the Department of Health advisories still, uh, such as mask up, isolate when you have the symptoms, uh, proper hand hygiene, and always practice physical distancing.